Comments Night of St. Draft. Welcome back to the Idiot Brewery. This is episode 27? Six? I thought it was six. No, seven, 26 seven? was last week, I think. It is 27. Uh, well, it's, it's it been, is 27. Numerically, yeah. that does sound correct. Yeah, 27 is after 26. Um, So, we are down another Jack. Uh, He just got back from finals week, and now he's getting settled in, and I don't know what's going on. But he can't be here today, so we have Dan back again for the third time in a row. Um, Hello, fellow children. Yeah, I don't know if you should call. Well, I mean, they're children, I guess, but not me. Anyway, um, we're just going to go ahead and jump into it. I think everyone knows how this goes, so who wants to present a deck first? Dan, what do you got? You sound like you have something exciting today. I think we're all pretty excited. Oh, I always have something exciting. Yeah. So this uh... sounds like the type of person that would always have something exciting. Like, whether it's in a closet or not, (laughs) that's, that's up for debate. That's debatable. So, the uh, deck that I'm presenting tonight is Nemesis Wave, where basically, this deck, the shell to this deck could be used for any amount of uh, X spell. But the deck is, it consists generally of Pelopal and Grand Arbiter combo. So, the deck is playing, of course, four Pelopala, which is a uh, two mana artifact creature Scarecrow, because tribal tribes matter. Um, exactly. with flying, and then two untap, add one mana of any color to your mana pool, and this combos specifically with uh, Grant Architect, which is one blue-blue for a Vidalcan Artificer creature. Other blue creatures you control get plus one, plus one. Blue, uh, target artifact creature becomes blue until end of turn, and then also has the activated ability of tap an untapped blue, uh, or sorry, yeah, Tap an untapped blue creature you control. Add two mana to your mana pool. Uh, spend this mana only to cast artifact spells or to activate abilities of artifacts. So basically, you can, uh, as soon as you turn Peel Apollo blue, you can then tap and untap and create infinite mana. And this deck is, uh, it, it is then running uh, four Birds of Paradise and four uh, Noble Hierarch. To ramp into it, so you can do this on turn three if uh, if needed. Gotcha. And then I mean, turn, the uh, turn deck three is... kill seems sweet. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, it's not a turn one kill like other decks that are playing this card, but the deck is also playing Neoform, which also comes in handy with the uh, Noble Hierarchs oh, yeah. and Birds of Paradises because you can Neoform these one mana art or these one mana creatures into your tasty artifact that you need for your combo. And then it also plays for Eldritch Evolution as well, uh, to tutor up as well the Peel Apollos that you need or the uh, Grand Architect. And then it's yeah, playing a healthy number of uh, of transmute spells, specifically Drift of Phantasms, which is a three mana transmute spell, and a uh, oh Muddle the Mixture, which is a two mana. So the well, deck so you're very aggressively into the combo then. Oh yeah, this is all in or nothing, like Fair just enough. straight glass cannon. Um, and your but the deck is playing is, is what? So the deck is playing one Azure Mage, okay. which is one in a blue, uh, with a uh, for a two one human wizard, and has an ar- activated ability of three in a blue to draw a card. And this is just kind of a uh, out in case you don't exactly have the combo pieces you need, but the transmute gotcha. spells can get you your. Either the Muddle the Mixtures can get you the Azure Mage to draw into the uh, into the Transmute spell that you need uh, for specifically Villainous Wealth, which is the Wincon. Mm. For X, Black, Green, Blue, Sorcery, target opponent exiles the top X cards of his or her library. You may cast any number of non-land cards with uh, converted mana cost X or less from among them without paying their mana cost. So generally, this deck is all about trying to cast everything of your opponents. Specifically, you about you generate about 63 mana and then you uh villainous wealth them for about 60. Huh. And then they're left with only land left in their list and then they kind of rage scoop and salt off, but uh you know what this deck's comedically bad matchup is? Neoform. <laughs> no, any deck playing the new Tristani. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, You're not oh, wrong. I accidentally ca- oh, I accidentally cast Tristani. Oops. <laughs> yeah, well then. <laughs> I am dead. The deck The deck is also playing four post mortem lunge, which just comes in handy for uh 
for any amount of removal that you have to deal with with Pilapala, where it's X and a Phyrexian Black for a sorcery, return target creature card with converted mat cost X or, or, sorry, with exactly X from your graveyard to the battlefield. It gains haste. Exile at the beginning of the next end step. Mm -hmm. I've so seen you can pay Devoted Company and Death Shadow both play this card. This card's pretty neat. Oh, I yeah. I like this card a lot. So this is pretty much just hoping and praying that they don't have any uh, any hand disruption or removal or graveyard hate. Thoughts and then, uh, yeah, pretty much. But uh, the sideboard, I honestly have no idea where to go with the sideboard, so um, be creative. <laughs> <laughs> be more, yeah. uh, just like, shift into more grindier versions of the creative. deck or whatever, but... Honestly, if you're so all in on the combo, there's almost nothing you can do outside of like the combo sideboard, which is usually like four Leyland of Sanctity, four Leyland of the Void, a um, couple things like Spell Skites or something to protect your combo pieces. There's usually nothing else. There's I, like various combo. Not opposed. Based oh, yeah. And I'm not opposed to Pact and Negation. Oh, yeah. Pact and Negation, too. Yeah. I didn't even think about that. That or possibly the uh, zesty mutagenic growth in case you have to dodge around burn. But still, I don't think that's exactly where you want to be with this list. I mean, that's fair. Probably not. Paying two life for mutagenic growth is really bad against burn. Oh, yeah. That seems <laughs> that seems like it would be awful. It sure is. To be for perfectly fair. Yeah. Well, then. Probably for, with the uh, sideboard, though. Um, you do want just two mana and three mana spells. That way, you can tutor. Mm -hmm. uh, you can tutor into them with transmute. Mm -hmm. That should be everything. Interesting. I like it. Well, then I I think I'm gonna jump into mine next. Um, Ooh, if we're if we're done with this. So yeah. So Jack, you and I have talked about uh, a deck in standard for a little bit now. Um, and that one being Bant Midrange. Uh, and it actually got me kind of Bant. sparked into um building and playing this and i basically just took bant midrange and kind of from standard and i kind of ported it over to modern um oh so the main the main build for this deck is like the main way that it sets up is that it plays three uh teferi time raveler uh three mana planeswalker from the new war of the spark which is one white blue for a four loyalty planeswalker already pretty good by itself um the static is each opponent can only cast spells at a time that they could cast a sorcery. So it shuts off your control opponent's counter spells. It shuts off removal spells. Once Teferi resolves, um, they basically can't do anything to him right away. They have to wait until their turn, which means that you can start doing whatever you need to do. Um, he has plus one. Until your next turn, you can cast sorceries as though they had a flash. Uh, also very powerful. And then minus three, return up to one target artifact creature or enchantment to its owner's hand. And then you draw a card. I love so, him, but I hate him at the same time. He, he's a really cool card. I like this card a lot. Um, and then you also play Vivian Champion of the Wilds, uh, which is two and a green for a four loyalty Planeswalker. Another three mana Planeswalker that also has four loyalty when she comes in. Very good. Uh, her static is that you may cast creature spells as though they had flash. Pretty important. You're casting a lot of stuff in your opponent's turn. Plus mm -hmm. one. Uh, up to one target creature gets Vigilance and Reach until end of turn, or until your next turn, I'm so, excuse me. Uh, and then minus two, you look at the top three cards of your library, exile one face down, and put the rest on the bottom of your library in any order. For as long as they that card remains exiled, you may look at it and you may cast it if it's a creature. Um, and so the basis of this deck is that you're playing these two Planeswalkers so that you effectively are playing everything at instant speed. Um, which allows you to play around control quite a bit. It plays a lot like um, the Collected Company decks, where they get to play like Collected Company and Cord and stuff on their opponent's turns, and then once their opponent counters it, they can untap and just do all the stuff again. But the difference gotcha. between this deck and that deck is that you don't play things like Collected Company or Court of Calling because you just rather play more threats and is that also yeah. kind of opens you up to playing threats that aren't three or four man like that are more than three mana i should say mm -hmm. um and that could be very relevant because there are a lot of really good four mana creatures and obviously collective company can also miss which i've i hate to admit that i've done on more than one occasion i've just cast a collective company and just hit single absolute nothing which is the yeah worst. that's the worst it feels really bad 
Um, so as far as creatures go, you're pretty straightforward. You have four noble hierarchs kind of on the early side of things to kind of ramp into your stuff. It's the best mana dork in modern. Why wouldn't you play a full four? Um, for your two drops, you have four Tarmogoyfs because Tarmogoyf is dumb. Uh, That's fair. One scavenging ooze to just try and help with the graveyard stuff. Plus, it's kind of the pseudo like fifth goif, uh, as well as four voice of resurgence. And voice of resurgence, if you don't know what this card does, this card's stupid. Uh, green white for a two two. Whenever an opponent casts a spell during your turn or when it dies, make a green and white elemental token with power and toughness equal to the number of creatures you control. So, what this allows you to do is if you cast like voice of resurgence on two right and then you on three cast teferi time raveler your opponent is forced to respond right then and that means that you're going to get the voice token they don't get to play around it as much if they want to cast something on your turn so yeah. um it, it kind of like you're, you're kind of doing this thing where you're trying to make as many awkward situations with your opponent as possible right and and that's what this deck does quite a bit um and then uh, you also, for your three drop creatures, you have three Spell Quellers. Spell Queller is just a good, dumb card. Already has Flash. Doesn't need Vivian. Uh, very powerful. Um, four Knight of the Reliquary. And, of course, I present this card because I think this card's nuts. Um, and then two Deputy of Detention just because removal, etc., etc. Now, uh, I mentioned Knight of the Reliquary. And the reason I really like Knight of the Reliquary in this deck is because with Vivian... Um, she becomes a really powerful, uh, just creature overall because you can flash in a Knight of the Reliquary. It's this big moron. It blocks really well, right? And then on your turn, you can tick up Vivian, target the Knight of the Reliquary, swing in, right? Uh, get some damage in on your turn, block with the Knight of the Reliquary, and then activate her to get more lands in your graveyard, or maybe go grab one of the few Ooh. utility lands that you're playing. Um, yeah. So with Vivian giving Ghost it vigilance Corner. is like really relevant. Yeah. So in the main, you have three uh, or four, I guess, pseudo um, sort of utility lands. You have uh, one Gavany Township, uh, one Ghost Quarter, one Horizon Canopy, just in case you want to cantrip off of a land, and one Stirring mm -hmm. Wildwood, just so you can end of your turn, activate, okay. go get a Stirring Wildwood. Now I have an extra attacker on my next turn that you didn't do the math for. Phoenix. Yeah, Stirring Wild was really good. 3-4 with Reach is is a lot. Um, it's really, really powerful. 4 Toughness um, is really relevant in this format. Yeah, exactly. We, we mentioned that last week, and 4 Toughness has always been sort of the yeah. uh, sweet spot for Modern. Um, mm -hmm. And then as far as Incidents and Sorceries go, you have 4 Path to Exile, one of the best removal spells in Modern. Yep. Uh, 4 Serum Visions. Um Mostly just because with Teferi, you can cast Serum Visions on your opponent's turn, and Serum Visions oh, so is it's the best. It's just better opt. It's just better opt, yeah, exactly. It's just better than opt in a lot of situations. And then you have two Time Wipes, another War of the Spark card, which uh, I really, really enjoy, which is a two white, white, blue sorcery. Return a creature you control to its owner's hand, and then destroy all creatures. And the main reason I really oh, like this okay. is because Bant likes to play a uh, a sort of game where um, it sort of plays to the board quite a bit, right? You always kind of gum up the board with all these uh, all these creatures, and it kind of forces your opponent to do the same thing. So you're playing these like very efficient threats that are just getting out of hand, and they have to try and gum up the board to get around it or to deal with it. And then right. you're just like, oh, glad that you've played into a board wipe. Didn't see that coming. And then you still get to keep your creature around, which is really relevant. Um, even better so if you do it on their turn when they just cast a bunch of things and then they try and, you know, do whatever. And then you can just, at your end step, time wipe, bounce my creature back to my hand, blow up your entire board on my turn, play Jeez. out my threats again. Um, your sideboard is fairly straightforward as far as screen you know, green, white, blue stuff goes. Um, you have another uh, utility land in the form of Bajuka Bog, just in case one of your utility lands doesn't do anything and you need to hit Dredge, you have a Bajuka Bog. Um, you don't really want to play Rest in Peace because you have Tarmogoyfs and Knight of the Reliquaries. It's kind of a nombo with those. Um, you have two Dovin's Veto because that card is stupid. Uh, Negate, they can't be countered. It's just really powerful. Um, yeah. Two Gaddock Teagues because you aren't playing Cord or Cocoa. That's great. Um, one Reflector Mage, 
uh, one seal of primordium to deal with, I don't know, blood moon, I guess. Um, just a one in a green enchantment that can blow up an artifact or an uh, enchantment. And it's really nice. Um, two selfless spirits, two stony silences, one supreme verdict in case you need an actual wrath. Two tireless trackers in case you need to be the beatdown. And then the best anti jund card in the game, one Sigarda host of herons. Oh my god. Oh no. It's oh, no. it's so much better <laughs> when your opponent down ticks a lily targeting you and you're like response flash in a Sigarda host of herons because you have Vivian in the in play. <laughs> Bomb it. It's yeah, oh man. I love oh. I love Sigarda. Sigarda's <laughs> one of my favorites. i uh back from when I played a lot of uh four color zoo, uh it was sort of like a big zoo variant, and Sigarda was Pretty much the only card you brought in against Jund, which I thought was really funny. You're just like, nah, I'm just going to bring this in and watch you cry when I cast it. Because they basically cannot deal with it. Um, it cannot be Lily Sacked. It cannot be targeted. Uh, they have to basically... Double that... anger of the gods. Well, yeah, they can like double anger or damnation will do it. Or yeah, it's about um, damnation or bust. Yeah, exactly. And then, uh, or but that's why you're. It can that's also, why you bringing in. Uh, that's why you play Gaddock Teague as well. Exactly. Can't damnation. <laughs> Gaddock Teague. Gaddock Teague's really good. I like that card a lot. That's uh, that's Bant mid range. I I I've been looking forward to this deck ever since that I sure is a mid range thought of thought of the the See, deck idea, which was like I like earlier that you're today. playing Small Vivian. You know where I like Small. I Vivian? I love Small Vivian. She's so you cool. Where, do you know where I think she really shines? I think she really shines in Hardened Scales Affinity, where I can flash in my Ornithopter. That or or flash in your walking ballista for five to absolutely <laughs> blow out your human's opponent. I mean, yeah, that's <laughs> fair, I guess. <laughs> okay. All right, so do you like being a libertarian? <laughs> of course. Do I? Who doesn't? <laughs> well, this deck isn't for you. Ladies and gentlemen, detain in Texas. <laughs> Playing off of the two popular memes, Am I Being Detained and Taxation is Theft. We're playing a blue-white taxes variant that also runs the Detain package. Yes, the Detain package. You might remember the Detain package from that one Azorius mechanic. That one attacked. time that one time you died to it in RTR uh, draft. Yeah. <laughs> like, martial Law was it's a bomb it, in that format. I feel so bad for the Detain mechanic because it's not Gray like ogre. four cast levels of meme. So, like, people don't remember it for the meme. But, like, it's not a very... It's also not a very good mechanic so it's kind of stuck in the middle like it's not remembered for being a, for being like a memeably bad mechanic and it's not remembered for being like a legitimately good mechanic so it gets forgotten because it's always in the middle there's so many middle mechanics that are always uh -huh. forgotten i mean this but anyway it, there's a like lot delve of really good detain cards and dredge so. and storm yeah delve and delve dredge and storm were all just cast to the wayside anyways <laughs> so we've got a pretty first off we've got a pretty standard death and taxes package here we've got the four aether vials We've got the three little Thalias. Only Taxes plays Aether Vials. Just yeah, Taxes obviously. things. Speaking ba -ba 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 -ba. of things, only Taxes play Little Thali. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely not just... any other deck in modern. No decks. Um, no. Two big Thalias are played. Um, Human just got... Taxes changed my mind. We've got four Flicker Wisps, because, you know, you gotta flicker some things sometimes. Um, we've got the Leonin Arbiter Ghost Quarter thing going. All in all, this is sounding pretty standard. So let's make this not standard. For for starters, okay. we're a blue white variant. Uh, well, this is hold on, Aether Vial isn't in standard. You're right. Um, <laughs> neither is the rest of this. Actually, there is a couple cards in here that are in standard, but we'll get to that. We run. You, you know, Jack. Yeah, what's up? You keep saying you keep saying that uh, word tax, but I think what you, you keep mispronouncing it. It should be theft. Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> so uh, okay. this is uh, uh, death and theft. Um, death so... and theft. <laughs> We're running three Spell Quellers since we're the blue variant, which is quite a fun card. Of ETB, Exile Spell with CMC 4 or less, and then when it leaves the battlefield, they can cast it, but who cares about that? It's 2-3 with Flash. Of course. Flash, very good. Um, we've got some Detainers. We've got Azorius Arrester, which is a 2-1 for one and a white human, relevant creature type. Soldier, not so relevant creature type. When it enters the yeah, battlefield, detain target creature and opponent controls. Um, so for those of you who don't know how detain works, here's a, and I don't blame you, here's a great refresher. <laughs> when a creature is detained, until your next turn, that creature a, can't attack or block. When a permanent is detained. Yeah, permanent, because anything can be detained. Sorry, yeah. there is, sorry, there is one card that, there's like one or two cards that detain non-land permanents. We will get to those. <laughs> if it's detained, it can't attack or block, and its abilities can't be activated. 
Until your next turn. Until your next... Well, I said that. Until your next turn. Um, next, we've got oh. three martial laws. Um, bomb of the limited format of its time. Two double white enchantment. At the beginning of your upkeep, detain target creature and opponent controls. Very fun card. Very fun. Um, we run one Azorius Justi- Justiciar. I always like to say it's just a card, but there's an I in there, and it makes it really hard for me to search it. Anyways, it's a 2-2 two, two for two and double white. Human wizard, two very relevant creature types. When there's the battlefield, you can detain up to two target creatures your opponents control. Up to very two target good. creatures. Up to two. Um, it's yeah, a so may was, ability. It is a may ability. Um, so I run one in the deck. Um, then we get to three Liev Sky Knights, which is a 3-1 for one, one white, one blue. It's a human knight with flying. Enter the battlefield, detain target, non-land permanent, and opponent controls. So there's a non-land yeah, permanent. I, I played right a bunch here. of this card in standard. This card's really good. Yes. And last but not least, we've got something a little spicier in our detain. We've got two Lavinia of the Tenth, which is three, one white, one blue for a 4-4 four, four legendary human soldier with protection from red. When it enters the battlefield, detain each non-land permanent your opponent's control with CMC 4 or less. Quite a card. I, now, I've, I've done to this in Commander, where they just like flickered this card over and over again. Yeah, that's why we have Flicker with, so it's great. Um, last but not least in this deck, we're doing a spicy inclusion that some taxes listen. Modern are trying right now with War of the Spark. We're running three Karn the Great Creator, and you might be thinking, ah. wow... Why? And the reason is, well, Microsynth Lattice in Why the else sideboard. Are we running? <laughs> We're running it from Microsynth Lattice and a couple silver bullets in the sideboard. But you know, the card is fun. It's great. What better, what better way to tax your opponent and detain them at the same time than to completely lock them out of playing the game? <laughs> um, you know, you it just is gotta physically get it. detaining your opponent. <laughs> physically, your opponent can't do anything. Last but not least, we have two Dovin Hand of Control, which is two in hybrid white-blue. Um... For your legendary Dovin Planeswalker with a static of artifact, instant sorcery spells your opponent's cast, cost one more to cast, and then minus one is until your next turn, prevent all damage that would be dealt to and dealt by target permanent opponent controls. On um, Texas List are trying it. I think it's pretty alright personally, so I'm giving it a whirl in there as well. Um sideboard, pretty standard. We've got other than some we've got some silver bullets we can tutor up with Karn the Great Creator. We've got a Chalice of the Void, a Graph Jigger's Cage, a Sorcerer's Spyglass, and a Mycosynth Lattice. Um, because you know you gotta ruin someone's fun. Uh, most notably Dan's. Um we've got two mirroring crusaders in the sideboard, pretty standard, two rest in peace, two stony silence, um, one ceremonious rejection, another war card. We've got Dovin's Veto, which is the white blue instant, can't be countered, counter a non-creature spell. Seems good in a white blue variant. Um, and then we have two Geist of St. Traft in the sideboard as well. Hmm. So yeah, that like is uh, Detain and Theft. How do you like it, Dan? Detain and Theft. Seems, I uh, feel personally attacked. Okay. Well, you should, because I was personally attacking you. So yeah. okay, uh, great. if you are out there and you listen, and you're from our local gaming store, or if you're someone in this call, um, if you build this deck and bring it to FNM, just let me know before round one, and I will make sure that you're paired against Dan. 100%. All five rounds. All no, five not rounds. all five, all five rounds. Just the first round. Just the, the so everyone needs to bring here. this list so that Dan has to play against it all five oh. rounds. Yeah. No, okay. All, like I said before, like I said before, the next OCM team event, everybody is bringing eight rack. Everybody. And I'm in for that. That sounds fun. Everybody right. at the event is bringing eight rack. Okay, Aiden, you're, uh, <laughs> you're next. I'm next? Yeah. All right. Yes. So Naya. Sure. No. Okay. That's it. All right. Thanks. All right. Okay. Good job. Anyways, All right. That's the Indian Brewery to, podcast. On to fresh brews. <laughs> All right. So, Naya, we're playing some zoo, right? Now, this isn't just any normal zoo deck, right? Because we're playing a sorcery that costs a green. It, yeah, it's called this, Traverse in... Ovenwald. Who I like Traverse yeah. Ovenwald. In this zoo oh, deck, yeah, it's a good one. You... I love this zoo deck, personally, because your opponent can forget to draw three Mishra's bubbles and just kind of discard them. <laughs> yeah, that was funny. <laughs> um, so, we have the standard zoo stuff, right? We have four Goblin Guides, we have four Wild Nicodles, we have four Tarmogoyfs, and we have us Scavenging Ooze in the main board, and we have two Tireless Trackers, uh, three Lightning Bolts, um, and that's pretty much it for the standard stuff, right? Those are uh, modern legal. Yeah, you're right. 
Uh, let's move on to the spicy stuff now. We are running two Eidolon of the Great Rebels in the main board. Um, let's see. Two Knight of Autumns. Knight of Kanatum. Um, a single Magus of the Moon. Uh, two Militia Buglers, because every creature in your deck minus Tireless Tracker has, um, Myron's tire Tireless Tracker and sometimes Tarmogoyf have, uh, power two or less. Um, we are also playing a single Gadok Teague in the main board. Hmm. Because, because, because it, it, Gadok it, Teague is good. Yeah, the it's spell good. Spell color needs a target. <laughs> exactly. Because uh, I mean, F-Tron. <laughs> yeah. We are... We are also playing a single Gideon Blackblade, which I actually hmm. find pretty good in this deck. It's a, it's a good card, honestly. I like that card a like, lot, yeah. Turn two, so if you go like turn one Tarfire and like Mishra's Bobble, and a turn two Goyf and a turn three Gideon Blackblade, give Tarmogoyf lifelink. You're just swinging for like five with lifelink. It's pretty good. Um, we have... It seems pretty decent. In the spell slots, we have a single Path to Exile and three Tarfires. Because Tarfire, Tarfire is, Tarfire is a tribal, and that's a yeah. type, so it counts for Traverse, and it counts for Tarmogoyf. We also have four Mishra's Baubles and two Aether Vials. Do you have any spicy, um, like, Traverse targets? Like... A single Gore Clan Rampager or something like that? No, I was thinking about it, but I really don't have room for it. And it's okay. not, like, that great, I guess. If 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 I were to put one in there, it would replace Gideon. I but... mean, you only need one... You only need to get one type of spice, and that's salt. Specifically, the salt of your opponent when you tutor up your when Magus you have a of the main Moon. Board, or, you, or you have a main board Gadok Teague. Let me tell you, or... the Magus of the Moon is annoying. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You tutor up a Magus of the Moon, just, like, slam it, and they're like... <laughs> okay, I guess. Sweet. So, in the lands, we have to compensate for Magus of the Moon, right? So we have three forests, three canopies, one mountain, two plains, a sacred foundry, a stomping ground, a temple garden, four windswept heaths, and three wooded foothills. And hmm. that is all the lands. It sounded like you just said mountain, 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 mountain. There were a lot of mountains in there. Whoa, whoa, yeah. I said four non non mountains. Oh right, sorry. Four forest. Oh no, five, and... five, five non mountains. Okay. Also, you can also <laughs> you can draw a card with rising canopy before it becomes a mountain. So yeah. Hmm. All right, onto the sideboard. The sideboard we have three path to exiles because creature decks. Yeah. Uh, we have another Eidolon of the Great Revel. It's really good in matchups where you have to like race, or like storm or something. We have another Gadok Teague, because Gadok Teague. We <laughs> have another uh, Skvangling Oog, because Skvangling Oog, uh, and and uh, Graveyard decks. We have a single Selfless Spirit for against, like, mid-range decks. Mm -hmm. uh, two Thalia Guardian of Thravens, because taxes. Because it's, like, oh, sorry, the best theft. card ever. Yeah. Uh, two more Knight of Kanatoms, because it's a good card. Uh, another Magus of the Moon. Uh, another Tireless Tracker. A single Thrun the Last Troll, which is a really good card. Yes, uh, yes it is. Yep. And now the real spice. We have a single Fiend Hunter because hmm. it's a Path to Exile that you can search with Traverse the Open World. So is, well, I guess you're not in blue, so you can't play Deputy of Detention. Never mind. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I like um, Fiend Hunter. Yeah, Fiend Hunter is sweet. That's, yeah, uh, that's Naya Traverse Zoo. I know it's really similar to like the normal Naya Zoo decks, but I just really like that it's it's really similar to like humans, where you have a lot of disruption with a clock. Yeah. And yeah, Magus of the Moon is a good card. Yeah, I completely agree. Magus <laughs> of the Moon is very good. I'm going to die to it eventually, I'm sure. <laughs> I mean, I die to it every time I play, like, Humans or Death and Taxes. My my land base is so bad that I just get screwed over by Blood Moon or Magus of the Moon or whatever. So. Yeah. But now this, yeah. you get to play it. Um, I mean, also, fair, I, uh, I played against, like, the Mirror earlier or whatever. I, I played against the Pelt Collector Zoo deck, Naya sure. Zoo deck. And, like, I just absolutely demolished them both games. You probably got a much better creature matchup 
especially the smaller creature matchups, just because you have like yeah, Tarmogoyfs to block everything. Tarmogoyfs yeah. and then yeah. the sco- the Scoozes. Oh my god! Oh yeah, they were so Scoozes good. Is very good against. And just the being able to search up Scooz or like any or like any other car, uh, creature with Traverse the Uvenwald, mm-hmm. I feel like it makes the deck so much better. Yeah, I totally agree. And honestly, like I've been really liking Militia Bugler too. Mm-hmm. Like even for like a zoo deck, because it's just like, oh hey, I'll just get my uh, my my two for one here. Mm-hmm. It can also still grab Wild and the Cuddle regardless of like whether or not you have mountains and plains. Yeah, and it can also relevant. grab it can also grab almost or like all of your hate pieces. Like it can grab Eidolon, Gadok Teague, Skuz, Knight of Autumn, yeah, and Magus of the Moon. Yeah, that's pretty relevant, actually. Yeah. So yeah, uh, we're going to do a little bit of a different thing than we normally do here. Um, I'm going to go over our quick ad read that we normally do at the end. Then we're going to jump into fresh brews. So uh, just going to remind everyone to like, comment, share, subscribe on our YouTube channel. Check out our deck lists over on Tapped Out. Um, Please go check us out on CastBox and soon to be Spotify. I know we're checking into that pretty soon. Um, Yes. Everything is linked below our videos here, as well as linked below our Castbox account, Castbox account, and uh, we'd really appreciate it if everyone just talked about it. You don't have to directly support our channel by, you know, sending us money or anything. Just you know, subscribe, talk, you know, comment on our videos, um, share our videos, all that stuff, and then we can User get our name engagement. out there. Drive exactly. It However, if you would like to send us money, please send this to the current address. Right, uh, <laughs> PO box on the screen now. Okay. Yeah, well, we, we also we have, a, uh, have a PO box. We also have a Patreon set up we where also for as little as five dollars a month, we will personally send you bone marrow from Austin. We also <laughs> don't have a Patreon. And anyway, I'm uh, sure this here's is my all right. Here's my uh, here's the link to my Make a Wish Foundation page. So we're gonna jump uh, into our fresh brews portion of the podcast now. Uh, right. So who wants to give a card to build around I first? Would. I don't. I, don't I would really love to have start. Ready, so whoa, 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 whoa. I said it first. All right, go ahead. Whoever's going to go. Well, I, right. have a, I have a card that runs off of Delirium, which is whoa, relevant whoa, whoa, with a Traverse. So, I, right. I, I, go. I changed mine at the last minute. Build me a car. Uh, build me a deck around Whispers of Emrakul. Oh, uh, hell yeah. Oh, yeah, okay. So, uh, this is one in a black. Target player discards a card, right? At random. Uh, at random. Is it at random, at random the first time? Okay. Yeah. And, and then if you have Delirium, it delirium it's, it's him to Turok. It's two cards at random. I didn't you know, know if the first part was random. Uh, yeah, you sure can. I've actually um, seen lists of Mardu Pyromancer play this. That like really? Yeah, it's they okay. had they had some um, a little bit more like delirium like builds or whatever, but they kind of jammed this alongside Young Pyromancer, which I thought was really cool. Uh, just because you're Ooh. also playing like Faithless Lootings and stuff, so you can discard things to make delirium work, and then you're just like him to Turok you. And then they're like, well, I am dead, I guess. Uh, losing all my cards and losing this game. Sweet. Um, I mean, so, yeah. this this could go into the sideboard of, like, the um, the the Jund lists that run Faithless Looting. Or, like, the, because, yeah, like, the Jund Traverse yeah. lists and the Jund Faithless Looting lists. Yeah, yeah because you're yeah. already running Tarfire and just turning on Delirium so quickly. Yep. Like, you could you could play this turn two, like, pretty easily, like, Bobble into fetch land tar fire you with uh him to Turok you. Or even like the the Soul Tide Delirium decks could probably utilize this too. Just because they can also like they can like him you and then like snap back him you. Like yeah. Oh, yeah, exactly. That is gross. Yeah, that seems <laughs> kind of what I would do, I think. That seems kind of sweet. So Yeah, and honestly, like maybe in the sideboard of like Traverse Shadow to just like break open the mid range mirrors. I mean, yeah, they probably need the the help against mid range mirrors. Like all the black green X decks are just such a problem for Death Shadow. So yeah, yeah. Well, sweet. I like Whispers of Emrakul. That was that was cool. I like that card a lot too. Yeah. All right, let's transition. It has the same converted mana cost. It has the same cost, but it's a really bad card. Build me a deck around Nizumi Grave Robber. Oh, this is the one that like turns into a reanimator guy, right? Yeah. Yeah, so um, Nizumi Grave Robber is a 2-1 for 1 and a black. Pay 1 and a black to exile a card. A cre- yeah, any card from an opponent's yeah. graveyard. And then if there are no cards in that graveyard, flip him. 
and he flips into Night Eyes the Desecrator, which is a 4-2 rat wizard um, that's legendary that says, Relevant four and a black, types. put target creature card from a graveyard onto the battlefield under your control. Um, so just reanimate for five mana uh, from any graveyard, which is kind of relevant. The Honestly, the biggest issue with this card is that the uh, the first half of it has to have a target, which I think yeah. is like the biggest problem. So there has to be one card in their graveyard for it, it to work perfectly. And I don't think that's mm-hmm. very good. I don't like that a lot. Um, so we're running Kaya Orzov Usurper to manipulate graveyard numbers. I mean, that does work, I guess. But I don't know. It's just like it's such a it's such a high cost for such a low payoff. I think you just don't get much out of it comparatively. So yeah. Plus, plus you, when it does flip, the payoff is kind of lackluster. It's it's a four a little over costed and it's legendary. Well, yes, it it's flips. a four two, but it's a five mana payoff, and that's far more what I'm more interested in. If you're looking for, uh, yeah, for something with four power for thing. two mana, then you might as well just be jamming Tarmogoy for something like that. But it's more specifically yeah. the four and a black that's just it, it it's that it's that uh activated ability that just sounds so tasty, but unfortunately is a little too overcosted. Mm-hmm. All right, where's the deck? Hmm. Orzov Graveyard Control. I mean Sure, but I don't know. I was thinking Esper, and they could play Training Grounds. Uh, I mean, I could see that, I guess. Just like three yeah, mana that's... reanimates, probably not bad. I yeah, don't know. And and then it's only a black to activate. It's so like the perfect great, curve but... would be like turn one Training Grounds into turn two Grave Robber into turn three Kaya into turn four Flip. Hopefully. Well, you could probably do it pretty pretty decently. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. Because that's that's six cards out of their graveyard that sure. you can put. I also like how this card is uncommon, so you can play it in Peasant. That's true. Hmm. Hmm. Makes it quite fun. Yeah. All right, Jack, what do you got for us? All right, ladies and gentlemen, you like elves? No. You uh, like shamans? Who? Elf shamans, okay. Build me a deck around Mast Admirers. Oh, this card's sweet. It's uh, two green green for a 3-2 that when it comes into play, you draw a card, uh, right? Mm-hmm. And then you can return it to your hand during your upkeep if it's in... No, no. whenever How's you cast work? a creature spell, you may pay green green if you do return it from your graveyard to your hand. Oh, that's what it is. Yeah, not during your upkeep, just whenever you cast a creature from your graveyard. Seems sweet. I like it a lot. Th- this card has seen um, a number of different areas of play. Um, there might be some sort of like mid-range elf deck you could build that, that kind of jams on this. I don't know. I kind of like it in like an, arist- an aristocrat style build. Well, like, put I it think in- a really powerful like line of this is having it alongside things like... Um, like you can do it with uh, Vivian's arc bow, but also like uh, Fauna Shaman. There's got to be yeah. an elf oh, aristocrat yeah. list that, that could use. This. I mean, maybe, but I'm just saying that like the elf engine. you could you could do this with like Vivian's arc bow or um, Fauna Shaman. Discard it and then go just get a use creature, it as... and then use it. Yeah, use it as like recurring fodder that you can just like constantly oh, discard to those cards. So we're putting it in green red squee. <laughs> I mean, maybe. <laughs> Although it doesn't need to be green wait, red squee, you just wait. need squee. Green red desecrated tomb. Oh my god. I mean desecrated tomb would be very relevant with that, yeah. That's for sure. Oh my god. We did it. We fixed modern. I don't know about <laughs> fixing modern, but I think it's kind of <laughs> sweet. We solved modern. Yeah, we solved sure. modern. <laughs> okay, sure. Yeah, we we solved modern, guys. When this yeah, yeah, yeah. the peasant. Best. Uh it is. You're right. It is an uncommon. Guys, we solved peasant. I don't think that that's correct. Okay, I'm going to move on to mine. Build me a deck around Skill Borrower. Sounds like a Yu-Gi-Oh card. It sure does. Whoa, okay. Skill Borrower is, is, uh, is an artifact creature human wizard. All relevant types. It's a 1-3. For two and oh, a blue, 
Play with the top card of your library revealed. As long as the top card of your library is an artifact or creature, it has the activated abilities of that card. All right. So this is pretty easy. You run this in the Necrotic Ooze Door to Nothingness deck. <laughs> I mean, I oh, guess. that's really funny, actually. What I, I, I kind of thought it would be funny, like, if you just had a Gristlebrand on top of your library. Oh, Ooh, And then okay. you just, like, oh, draw yeah. 14 cards with, with Skill Borrower. Okay, oh, that's interesting. That's pretty, that's, just, that's like, pretty Skill you Borrower have to do it. with, like, Brainstorm effects like Jace and stuff? Yeah. And you can put you can put stuff back on top, and then be like, "Oh, I have a Gristle Brand on top of my library. Sweet, draw fourteen <laughs> cards." It is like a really it's a really interesting way to cheat Gristle Brand into play. Yeah, to be perfect. Oh my fair. god! And then if you had Borberigmos on top of your library, ooh, just like throwing your lands at at them with Skill Borrower seems kind of sweet, actually. Seems hot. You can set this up I, really I easily like with this. uh with Scroll Rack. Or well, rather, you can't you because can't it's not right. modern. Yeah, you can do well, Magus um, of the Scroll. <laughs> yeah, you you could do it with uh, what is that card called? Mystic Speculation, I believe. Um, what is that? So Mystic Speculation is not a super great card, but it's one blue oh, sorcery for okay. Scry three, but it also has buyback for two. I so, could see that. Yeah, so for like three mana, you can effectively just constantly have this scry three, and you can constantly like manipulate the top of your library, um, and you can do it do so in such a way where uh, if you have like more brainstorm esque effects, you could have skill borrower draw fourteen, and then if you drew the Borborigmos, you could like put it back on top and then throw your lands at your opponent. I wonder if there's a combo yeah. with this. I wonder if you can do that, just like a Grishel brand. Well, styled combo where you're not cheating one of them into play you're you just using can, skill borrower you, this isn't as good but if you have um doom whisperer on top of your library you can pay two to surveil two and then you can dump the card below doom whisperer and keep doom whisperer on top oh okay if you wanted That's to and bad. then once you get and then once you get a card on top that you want you could bin doom whisperer oh that's kind of mm. cool that's I mean, Noxious awesome. Revival hmm. also works really well with this as well. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Noxious Revival is really good. Wow. Is oh, this my deck God. Real? <laughs> is this a thing? Did we do is this it? A deck? Did we do a Did thing? We do it? I think this is actually like two, like actually a thing you could do. All right. Give me a week and a half. Will do. Yeah, you have it. Skill Borrower <laughs> seems like. Skill Borrower is really legitimately cool. Legitimately seems like a hot deck. Yeah. I also <laughs> like it because you can like buy a uh, foil playset for under $10. Oh yeah. <laughs> I and actually a plus. I like it I like it more than necrotic ooze because it doesn't die to graveyard hate. Yeah, it it allows you to do it from the, your library and I've always yeah. thought that like that kind of manipulate like graveyard manipulation is always a thing that people do in There's magic. It's it's, it's, it's literally yeah. happened forever, right? But like the the manipulation of library like this or like the manipulation of the exile zone is always something that's really interested yeah. interested in like fascinated me. I always thought that design space was really cool. Yeah, like it's really hard to board against like lantern control, and this is like kind of yeah. like lantern control in the same fact you... where like it's hard to disrupt. The other thing is that the the nice thing is that there's also um some merit of saying like this also gets the activated abilities of artifacts. Yeah. So. There's there could be some some other artifact things in there that like maybe Grishelbrand doesn't get to do stuff like that, but like you sure. can also mm -hmm. just have that access as well, which is kind of neat. Man, it could have been another so. copy of KCI. I mean, yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah, I don't know why you'd ever you know, want that, but I mean, hey, you whatever. know, if you, if you have a Vizier of Remedies and a Devoted Druid on top of your library, <laughs> that is that or, is uh, correct. Or Pelopala. <laughs> Is this yeah. is this a is this a way to power is to, is a way to like power out multiple different combo decks at once without actually having to go full five colors for them? I mean, maybe. I mean, how many how many brainstorm effects do we truly have in modern? One. Well, there's no, there's Jace, and then there's the Augur, the guy from uh, not Augur of Bullets, the one the, the one, one blue from guy Ixalan. who looks at like the top four. No, no, no. There's the blue. There's the wizard that looks at like the top three or four, and then you put them back in any order, right? Oh, uh, Sage the Dominaria. of Epitir or he's, whatever. Oh, isn't there... He's from, yeah. yeah. He's isn't from there Time Spiral, um, right? Oh, uh, Ty, Tygam Scheming? Tygam Scheming it's, can do it, but there's also... Yeah. Um, oh, I'm yeah, trying Sage to think of the name of it. Uh, there's the... Th it's like three in a blue, but it brainstorms. It's the three-two from, like, Ixalan. Yeah. 
or rivals. Auger it's not auger. Uh, no, no, it's not auger. Um, Riverwise auger. Riverwise, yeah, Riverwise auger, auger. That's what it is. Yeah. Man, this deck might actually be a thing. That's really cool. I like that yeah, a lot. All right, so that's and definitely. Honestly, I think you could do this in mono blue. You crystal yeah, brand, but mono blue. You probably could actually. <laughs> that's cool. Um. So yeah, oh that's God. that's been the idiot bird for this week. Um. I've been Knight of St. Draft and will remain to be Knight of St. Draft. Um, joined by uh, Dan, who is not our normal co-host, but he goes by Arcane Asylum. I don't know if he streams, so I can't really plug his stream here. So, I've um, been get. I'm going to get back into it. Sweet. I'm, awesome. Uh, yeah. I, and oh, then um, I've also joined by my two normal co-hosts, Nextdoor Lolly and Ashes of an Empire, or hey, Scales, Scoodle, or... Whatever his name the is. Real, real Wyatt. Uh, yeah, that. that. <laughs> um, so uh, we're just going to remind everyone to don't push your bird off a cliff, don't smack your grandmother, and we will see you next Saturday at noon. Oh. Have a good one, everybody. Uh, don't bolt to vote it, Druid. Oh, yeah, yes. definitely don't bolt. <laughs>